We're gonna go over the 10 factors that make you a high risk insurer or insured, as we say, for car insurance. There are a lot of people that are curious, why are my rates going up so high? And what can I do to combat them? If you're curious and you wanna know more specifically what is causing you to become more of a higher risk, then how do we prevent that as well? Let's dive in. The first one is the frequency of claims. Most companies in most states have the ability to change what they want there. So the state determines we're a three-year state or a five-year state. The company can still determine if they're three-year or five-year as well. So you might be in a five-year state that rates back all the way to five years of claims, but the companies that you go to sometimes will only go back three years. There are some available, and I'll put a link in the description below. If you are shopping around, there's some companies that we work with or that I've worked with in the past that are really good for that. But knowing that is gonna cause a red flag for insurance companies. It's not so much the type of claim. Sometimes it's the number of claims. If you've had three towing claims and you've had one at fault accident or one not at fault accident, a lot of companies start to pull back and not want your business when you've had five or more claims in general. Now the towing claims don't typically in most states count against you. Comprehensive claims in most states don't count against you, but it's still payout for a company. And you gotta remember, these are companies. They're trying to make a profit. So they're estimating your claims are gonna be this much. You're gonna pay this much in premium. They wanna make that $100 every year on you. And if they can't do that, then they're just gonna let you move on to the next company. It leads into the second one, which is serious violations. Those trump it all. If you have a major claim or a major accident or a major occurrence, then the insurance company is going to pull back and say, this is high risk. To be clear, that's not with every company. Some companies or most companies are gonna be ridiculous ridiculously high in price if you've had a DUI, if you've had reckless driving, if you get caught drag racing. Most of those type of claims are high risk because there's a lot of deaths involved. There's a lot of injuries involved. There's a lot of damage and payout. Once again, it's a company. They don't want to pay out as much as possible. It's their job to lower that to make sure they're taking the right risk in for what they can afford to pay. That's one of the reasons you see these companies at different prices is because it's their affordability versus their risk tolerance. So these companies are able to pull in or push out different levels or products as they call them or different prices that fit the needs of the type of customer they're looking for. There are higher risk companies that actually are cheaper when you have some high risks. It's crazy because think of it this way. A lot of people get a penalty for not having insurance. It's different if you haven't had it for the right reasons, but let's just say you let your insurance lapse and you skip the payment. You went in cancellation, now you wanna join another company and they're saying, well, you gotta pay more. I've actually seen it where some companies have gotten cheaper when that has happened. It's not common, it's a few and far between situation, but it is something that can happen because you're a great fit for a higher risk company. Don't get me wrong, there's not many of them out there, but it's just one of those things that you've gotta feel out, determine if this type of risk that you have. Now these major claims and occurrences do play a little bit further or extended of a time frame. So when we're talking previously, we said three year and five year states, your DUIs and your larger incidences typically stay on your record for 10 years for most states and most companies. I'm gonna debunk one, which is medical claims. If you've had medical claims, that actually is weighted heavier, but in general, it doesn't necessarily affect the policy differently. I put my foot in my mouth, right? Because it, yes, it, it does increase based on the number or the severity of a medical claim, because that's what they're really scared of. They know what your car is worth. An insurance company knows that. They don't know what your medical is going to be. And if you have really good medical and you're in a risky area, then that rate's gonna go skyrocketing. We already mentioned the fourth one, which is having a lapse on insurance, not having continuous insurance is a major factor. So when you have a lapse and you forget to pay the bill, whatever that case is, you're gonna pay at least 20 to 30, sometimes 50% more to start that policy back up. Having a new policy is the highest risk an insurance can take, especially when there's no history to go off of. You might have had insurance, but you missed a day. That still goes back to day one as if you've never had it before. So having that next six months makes it a benefit once you've gone to that next renewal, you can go back to those companies and say, I wanted to reshop it and see if there is a better deal for me now. Most companies will give you that extra deal because you've rebuilt the trust and the relationship with one carrier. Now the other carriers want to do more business with you. The fifth is the use of the vehicle. And this is really just your personal preference. Hopefully you're not lying on your applications, but if you are lying and they catch it, that's the fraud, right? So you get flagged as fraud and you're just a high risk. 
in the case that you're using the vehicle for business, that is a higher risk. So that will actually slightly increase the premium. I'm not seeing more than a 10% increase on average. So that may vary. Let me know if you've had that change in the comments below. But the types of usage a vehicle has is three types. You've got pleasure or personal. You've got commute, which is going to work and back. And technically school counts as commute. And then you have business use. Business use is for the realtor. You're going to different locations, but you never actually go to one specific location back and forth, five days a week, 10 miles each way, nine to 10,000 miles a year to and from work. That's not common. The business use is maybe a construction worker. You're driving to lot A to work on the building there. You're driving to lot B to do this. You're driving to this house or that house, and it just goes back and forth with that type of business use. It is higher risk because the locations that you're going to are unknown and so that can be and possibly is a bit more of a risk for an insurance company now the question a lot of people ask which probably should be another video but is can i use it for business we're not going to dive too far into that but usually a company you'll have to ask them they'll let you bring materials to a business as long as it's just standard like in the bed of a truck it's not a high value item you're not doing deliveries consistently and you're not having a tow behind trailer and that falls right in line with the six one which is the distance that you drive that's part of that calculation because they assume business is longer distances but if you drive 20 miles to get to work that's way off from someone that typically drives five miles to get to work the more that you're on the road the more risk there is. So that kind of combines to all of these pieces. If you've had an at-fault accident, and you're like, I shouldn't be high risk because I just had one. It's my, f yeah, it happened, so what? But then now they see you're driving 20 miles one way to work. So you're driving 15 plus thousand, 20,000 plus miles a year, which is way more than the average. And then they also see that you may have had two towing claims. So this profile that the insurance company is building for you as you get quotes, they're trying to determine that risk. Having more mileage involved with these other pieces tend to bump you up in that risk level. And yes, they know how many miles you're driving nine times out of 10. One, most of the car carriers, unfortunately, share the information. I just made a video on that. Two, when you get your oil change, a lot of times they can collect that data and sell it. It's, I don't like it, but it's the way a lot of companies do it. And then three, they'll actually ask you to send a picture of your odometer. And six months, 12 months later, they might want another one. So they may have you prove that you're driving the miles that you're driving if you're going below a certain threshold. Typically anything below 10,000 miles, honestly, probably 8,000 miles, they start to discount and then they start to ask for proof that you are driving less miles. The seventh is a major piece is your credit score. And I say credit, technically they call it an insurance score. Let's be truthful. Most of the time it's credit based. There are about five things. I'll actually link the video that goes into those major things that they check. But every time I've checked it, most of the time it's right in line with your credit score and just barely a little bit different. It can differ for person because if you have multiple claims that affects that insurance score and your credit is bad, that affects that insurance score. That's going to raise it. The best thing you can do is consistently keep the credit up so that when they pull these insurance scores that they're not gonna create you as a high risk driver. And it's okay if you wanna talk about in the comments below. I know that a lot of people feel that it's not fair because what is my payability? and all of this have to do with it. That's not the only thing that they pull. Like I said, I'll link that video that goes more in depth on that in just a moment. Number eight is the age of the drivers that you have. If you have younger drivers, you're high risk. It just comes hand in hand. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that your insurance policy is going into a high risk policy. Most of the time having a young driver added to a parent's policy is not that bad. You're gonna see a hundred sometimes $200 bill extra a month, and it's up to you if you keep them on or exclude them from the policy. So you have options available to you, but if you have multiple younger drivers, or if you are a younger driver, you get your own car, you register it, now you need an insurance policy. That is gonna be two to three times more expensive than if you just go on to a currently live policy under a parent or a guardian. Number nine, I think I'm on nine. <laughs> It's the modifications. This is very few and far between because modifications have fallen off in the last several years. People just don't care so much about their cars. But if you do have a four inch lift on your truck and you have this $8,000 stereo equipment, there's limits that the policies allow you to carry. So be mindful of that. That's not necessarily a higher risk. That's more of a premium increase, but they have to determine what type of vehicle has what type of risk. So those old, what, 93, 95 CJ Jeeps, 
they had a rollover constantly so that people got injured. It's almost impossible to insure it. If you have a police inceptor car, interceptor car, then you may be a high risk vehicle to where insurance companies won't touch it. Some will, some won't. We'll have to figure out and determine which one's the best fit for you. There are guidelines on which are eligible and ineligible vehicles and what the price point is higher value cars, you have to put a certain value to them, a certain risk to them so that they have the right premium collected for the type of risk that they're taking on. And lastly, number 10 is, <laughs> we're doing the dance here, spirit fingers. <laughs> number 10 is the type of occupation, not specifically your occupation. They've outlawed being able to say, this is you know your homemaker or your construction worker or whatever, it's more the locations you go to but they do want to make sure that the type of occupation is taken on the type of risk. Let me rephrase that. That kind of exactly says the opposite to itself. If you're a taxi driver, you need a certain type of policy versus if you're a personal person that just wants to drive to school. If you're a construction worker and you use your truck for construction, then you need a different type of policy. There's commercial policies that determine that. It doesn't necessarily raise the cost if you go with a commercial policy. Sometimes that's the best route to go. It just depends on what the right fit and risk is for that insurance agency. As mentioned, the main pieces that you gotta focus on is the credit score. And I'm gonna link a video here that goes into depth on that credit score find out what that insurance score is really gonna play a factor in your policy. Another great video that's gonna be helpful, I will link here as well. Otherwise, I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.